ladies and gentlemen chelsea transfer news transfer news is well and truly upon us big up to each and every one of you guys welcome back to the other side of the coin honestly right away straight away smash the like button if you're here for the first time subscribe because look transfer news is going to be buzzing and straight up ladies and gentlemen looks like estaval william is most likely going to be a chelsea player the only thing that i'll say is don't, don't expect him to be there for next season. He's not going to be there for next season. He's going to be there for the season after 25-26. But this is quite exciting. Um, obviously, any bit of transfer news, dopamine, you know, it hits you hard. It hits you hard. So let's start. Let's start from this particular news from the beginning. We'll give you my opinion after we go through the news in regards to Estevar William. Chelsea want to seal. Estevao William, uh, William Estevao. Is it Estevao William or William Estevao? Obviously, Fabrizio Romano saying William Estevao. I have seen predominantly people say Estevao William. Deal as soon as possible after personal terms agreed as reported. Negotiations underway with Palmeiras while Chelsea want to get it done in the next days to avoid any surprise. Chelsea believe his generational talent and big opportunity. So th there's big talk, big talk from Chelsea. Chelsea are advancing well in conversation with Palmeiras over Estevão William, 32 million euros up front, a hefty amount of money for a 17 year old, plus 25 million add ons were discussed. So, this is a huge amount of money for a, for a young kid. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people are saying he's little Messi, he's little Neymar, he's, uh, you know, generational talent. So, let's see, let's see how it all turns out. But Palmeiras wants a bit more up front. It's going well so far. So, look. I'm pretty positive we've got this player, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, exciting exciting times for Chelsea Football Club in the future with Kendry Paez, with uh, you know Estevar William, lots of talented players coming to Chelsea Football Club. Estevar William is really excited to be a Chelsea player and play in the Premier League after Chelsea presented their project for the present and for the future. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, He's not going to be there for the next season. For me, it's far more important to think about now. I can't really focus too much about the future because I don't know how the future is going to look like. I need to ensure that the present is corrected uh, because right now, you know, we, we should be we should be a lot better than what we are. So let's see how we finish off this season. Let's see where we are next season in terms of Europe or no Europe. And then let's see exactly where we finish in the table next season to hopefully make it back into the Champions League. Now, having said that, Look, it's great. It's great that Chelsea are going out there and, you know, making sure we are the first ones identifying some of these top talents as opposed to, you know, previous times where all of these other clubs would end up buying all of these superstars and then we would have to go and pursue them for exorbitant amount of money. So I'm fine, you know, if, if Chelsea have identified your Kendry Paez, who does look like a superstar. Kendry Paez honestly does look like a superstar. And a lot of people have high praise about Estevão William as well. So, look, all I want to say is that I'm very keen to see what is the plan. Because surely with all of these talented young players, are every single one of them going to make it at Chelsea Football Club? That's the doubt. Do we have a plan? Do we have a proper blueprint, a development progress for these particular players because it will be a shame if they if they don't succeed at Chelsea Football Club and and then you'll potentially damage the reputation that our oh, Chelsea all they do is just you know hoard all of these talent and then they don't have no idea about it but I like the fact that in this particular report from Fabrizio Romano stating that uh, Chelsea presented their project for present and for the future so let's see how that all works out to be I know some of you guys are not interested to know oh look if if it, if this player cannot help us out next season then I'll, i don't want to know um because next season is the next most important thing i fully understand it but um so far i have to say some some of our transfers under this new ownership and the new sporting directors like they've picked out some gems like you know obviously cole palmer was a very very good one marlo gusto is a very very good one and um you know, there are some other bits and pieces of players that are also coming together as well. So let's see how it all turns out to be in the future. Now, next up, check this out. Chelsea are expected to reignite interest in Emmy Martinez this summer. Look, I like Emmy Martinez. I think he's a very good shot stopper. But my, my issue is I don't I don't know whether he's like excellent on the ball. I think he's decent. Don't get me wrong. He's very, very decent. He's better than the ones that we have right now. I mean, Robert Sanchez... 
is meant to be much better <clears throat> in terms of ball playing distribution. But this season, Sanchez, um, he's out of madness. He's out of madness. So look, Emi Martinez, I, I think more than anything, I like the shithousery. Absolute shithousery is something that I really appreciate from Emi Martinez. Um, and, and as I said, he is a superior goalkeeper than the ones that we have. So I don't mind this particular uh, goalkeeper. I believe Aston Villa right now, I'm just look, looking at the score. I think it is half time at the moment. They are losing 1-0. So Aston Villa, they're going to be out of the Conference League. Um, but they are going to be in the Champions League. I'm pretty sure they'll finish fourth in the Premier League. So does Emiliano Martinez entertain the thought of joining Chelsea knowing we don't have any Champions League football uh, next season? And Aston Villa, they do. So let's see what happens. I mean, does money talk at the end of the day? We will see. Let me know your thoughts about Emiliano Martinez as a goalkeeping option. Chelsea have been put off by a potential deal for Nico Williams. Not only are they well stocked in that position, but Williams want, wants more than the 172000 per week he currently earns. He currently earns 172 per week? Wow. Athletic Club is balling out. I had no idea he's already on 172k per week. If that's the money you're on, why don't you just stay there? I don't know whether there's no way you're going to get that at Chelsea Football Club. Um, Nico Williams, we are already stacked now. As I, I've not watched too much of Nico Williams, I've watched bits and pieces. From what I've seen, I'm pretty sure he can play on that on that left side as well. He doesn't necessarily need to play on the right side, right? Let me know in the comment section. But look. If, if the money is going to be an issue, then forget it. Forget it. There's no way we're going to pay Nico Williams, who I believe is only 21 or 22. What's Nico Williams' age? Let me have a look at Nico Williams' age, man. Um, Nico Williams' age. 21. 21-year-old 21 wanting more than 172000 yeah, you need to you need to you need to prove yourself a little bit first before you can start demanding that level of money. So look, if money is your sole drive to join Chelsea Football Club, then don't worry about it. On Conor Gallagher, I wouldn't rule out the section of Conor Gallagher. Um, sorry, I wouldn't rule out the scenario of Conor Gallagher and Chelsea not agreeing to a new contract and Conor Gallagher staying. That does not mean he necessarily has to run down his contract and leave for free if. It is. It still opens the door for more negotiations at some point coming from our law. Look, yeah, he's got he's got one more year left. Um, of course, if 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 the negotiations don't go well now, that doesn't mean it's finished. They can further look to negotiate more. I fully believe Conor Gallagher wants to stay at Chelsea Football Club. He really is enjoying his time at Chelsea. Uh, under under Maurizio Pochettino, and let's be honest, man, Maurizio Pochettino, he's this is his number one player. Conor Gallagher is his most important player. So, if we are looking to keep Pochettino next season, it makes no sense to let go of Conor Gallagher. So, let's see if we can find a solution. Um, but yeah, it looks like even if there is no contract available soon, Gallagher will stay at Chelsea and just pretty much see out the contract which hopefully will allow for time to, to, to negotiate further. So let's see what happens down the track with Conor Gallagher. Pure profit, does it hit in financial fair play? We've got issues um, that needs to be rectified. Chelsea are believed to be targeting a striker, left back and centre back this summer. Look, striker 100%. Centre back 100% as well, knowing that there is no Thiago Silva and... Uh, you know, it's not like we're not going to have injuries next season. How is Wesley Fofana going to turn out to be? God knows. Uh, Chalaba potentially going to be sold as well. Another player who I don't think should be sold, but I think potentially will be sold. So in that case, a centre-back is needed. A striker is needed. A left-back, look, potentially we do because Ian Martin is going to be sold to Dortmund, uh, even though I don't want that to happen. But I think that's going to that that's inevitable now. Lewis Saul's already gone to Newcastle. Ben Chilwell probably needs to be replaced. I would keep Kukurea, someone who can invert, and then I'd be looking at buying a left back that can that can you know complement that 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 position, um, and then perhaps rotate with Kukurea, compete with Kukurea as well, and um, 
yeah, see if, if they can give us a different dimension to our game, not just only invert, but also from an attacking standpoint as well, if they can give something. But look, so far, I like these three targeted positions, um, including the goalkeeper. I think it's very, very important. These four positions need to be addressed. Jose will decide whether Pochettino stays or goes just days after the Bournemouth match. I believe Bournemouth match is the last match. His season in charge is expected to be judged in its entirety together. So coming from our law. Um, so yeah, that end of review, uh, end of end of season review will definitely happen. And um, the way I look at it is, I honestly don't think he's going to get sacked. I really don't think he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna get the opportunity to uh, you know, manage next season off the back of what Todd Bowley was speaking you know, earlier, earlier uh, today or late yesterday, UK time, um, straight from Hollywood. It kind of feels like these owners are quite okay with Maurizio Pochettino. I know Matt Law is about to now say this. The Conference League would not satisfy Chelsea's ambitions. Look, even if we make it to Conference League, I think they're going to still keep him. I really do think. Because who's linked? Who's linked with us? Which manager? Every manager is coming out publicly and st saying that they're staying at their respective clubs. I still do think, though, we are a hot shot for Europa League, though. We are a very, very hot chance for Europa League. And if that happens, Mauricio Pochettino definitely stays at Chelsea Football Club. But even if he, if we get Conference League, I think he'll still stay, st uh, stick around because he's going to present his side of the story, which is there's been a lot of injuries. Um, in my opinion, if we miss out on Europa League, I feel like he needs to go. He needs to go because you failed. It's not just about the injuries. In a totalitarian for this entire season, you failed. There's been so many instances where in-game management, starting lineup, and, and just the pure fact of this, you know, having this mentality of this, this like very flimsy, very weak mentality all throughout the season, which I feel has culminated from Maurizio Pochettino, the things that he's said in the press conferences. Um, which uh, honestly is, is unacceptable from a Chelsea manager's point of view, but the tactical side of things as well from earlier parts of the season. I know everyone's very caught up in the last two and a half games, but let's be honest, that's not how the season has gone, uh, in my opinion. So look, from my perspective, if you make it to Europa, you get to at least see next season up until November, December to see you're in the Champions League positions or not, fighting for Champions League positions. Um, and if you don't make it to Europa this season and you make it to Conference League, I believe he needs to go. And we need to get serious, man. We need to get serious for next season. Cole Palmer nominated for both Player of the Season and Young Player of the Season in the Premier League. An outstanding achievement in itself. What a player. A sensational. Sensational player. He's been our biggest shining light this season and I'm I'm so excited you know ecstatic about this particular player I've actually gone in and voted as well so please grab the ladies and gentlemen go and do the due diligence and vote for Cole Palmer because we would love to see him win either of those look I'm not really sure whether he wins the player of the season award um, I think it might go to someone like you know someone from Manchester City or Arsenal because they're in the title race but young player of the season, there should be no doubts that it should be Cole Palmer. I mean, 20-plus goals, nearly 10 assists in the Premier League. It's quite outrageous. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, on Chelsea Stadium, the stadium issue seems to have gone back to square one. Once they bought in Jason Gannon and some others, they started again, which is crazy, ladies and gentlemen. You remember Paul Goldstein? I think he was the Tottenham Spurs guy that was brought in to, to look after the stadium you know, redevelopment plans and whatnot. Now we're back into square one. So you see, like, the issues that we are having under this new ownership that they need to rectify, man. They talk about creating more revenue because down the track, revenue will drive how much you're going to spend. One of the biggest ways to increase revenue is you need to redevelop the, the stadium. They need to find a solution ASAP. The fact that it's back to square one. They've started again and they've got brought in someone new, Jason Gannon. They, they need to get this sorted ASAP because, and I know it's not easy because the pitch owners are making it difficult. And the pitch owners, you need to understand, man. I under, I get it. You, you own the pitch. This is very significant. 
But we need to increase the size of the stadium badly. It's for the sustains, sustainability of our football club down the track. If we don't make enough money, we will not be able to compete. We will not be able to compete. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know your, your thoughts about everything we spoke about. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, everyone, take care. See you.